Okay, hello everybody, it's HM1 Doll. Today I'm going to be speaking about, or speaking to the your V500 uh, Draeger. This device here we primarily use in our ICUs. Um, so to begin with, I'm just gonna talk about the ice outside of the machine. This top por portion right here, this is what we, we call this to pro provider interface. At this point right here, you'll be able to uh, uh, set your parameters, place your settings, and you'll also be able to review your measurements. Um, this portion of the ventilator right here, um, you have your inspiration port and an expiration port, and there's also a place for a flow sensor. I'm gonna get to that in a second. And then also externally, we have a, uh, a, a heater um, where we can ensure that we have active heated humidification going to our innovative patients. On the back of the ventilator, we have our 50 PSI air oxygen sources. So I'm gonna plug those up. The power plugs on the ventilator should go to a red outlet. Once you're done moving your ventilator, always ensure that you lock the vent wheels at the bottom. So I'm just gonna start off with these valves. Um, this first valve, this is the exhalation valve. This is single patient use. So after you're finished with this, we're gonna dispose of it. Components of it, it has uh, this cup. This cup is a, like a water trap. Any condensation or rain out can collect in this cup. Um, it also has like this external diaphragm. Um, so you just want to make sure you have a, uh, a tight seal on this diaphragm when you're inserting it because that can give you some, some leak troubles on, on your circuit. That's going to be inserted in here and then get the lock. The next valve is going to be your inspiration valve. This one is a multi-patient use. We typically don't remove these from our ventilators. We leave them in, but for the sake of this video, I removed it um, just so that you know it can be removed for troubleshooting purposes. So. Next, we have our flow sensor. So there's an external flow sensor, and that's just gonna go inside this port down here. I'm gonna insert that there and lock and ensure that I have a tight seal. Now I have my bacterial virucidal filters. One's gonna go on the inspiratory port, and then the other's gonna go on the expiratory port. So again, when we're uh, applying positive pressure ventilation to our patients invasively, we wanna ensure that we're heating the air going to their lungs. Um, so with that being said, this external cup is gonna ensure that we have uh, active humidification at 37 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna take this water trap and I'm gonna slide it on to this chamber until it's locked. It also has some ex extra corrugated tubing. This corrugated tubing is to ensure that the gas flowing from the ventilator is passing over, collecting heat and humidification, and that's being delivered to our patients. So, gonna place that there. These cords on the back is sending signals to the external heater to ensure that it either needs to heat the tray up or drop the temperature so that we're maintaining 37 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to connect the circuit. So the inspiratory line, and then the expiratory line is gonna go on the expiratory side. I'm just gonna sit the circuit right there. I'm gonna rotate the machine so you can see what I'm doing to the external heater. So these temperature probes, yellow should go to yellow, and then blue should go to blue. So now I know my temperature probes are all connected on my circuit. When you turn the machine on, it's gonna take you to this first tab. Inside that first tab here, uh, you have your current patient, that's if you need to put the ventilator on standby, bag the patient, transport them, put the, you'd extubate them and put them on something else. Um, you can, once, when the ventilator is on standby, if you turn it back on and hit current patient, it's gonna have all of those parameters that you set for that patient. All right, other than that, you have new adult, pediatric, and neonate. Um, when you press one of those, it'll preset some of the parameters to match with that patient population. Uh, for today's lab, I'm going to select new adult. So as you can see, when I select it, this rotary knob lights up yellow. You wanna confirm what you're doing with the knob. So there it takes us to a secondary screen. On this screen, a couple of things that, that you wanna do. As you can see, the top part, it says, uh, perform a, a device and breathing circuit check. This will be done before every patient use, all right? But for today's lab, I'm not going to conduct a breathing circuit check. So I'm just gonna reset the alarm, hit alarm set reset and confirm there. So on this, uh, this standby tab, uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is ensure that we're setting the ventilator to the, the tube that the patient has. So we're gonna go tube and IV. At this point, um, application mode should be tube. And when you look down at the bottom of the screen, you have tube type and then tube size. Um, so I'm just gonna ensure that it says endotracheal tube and then below that, the size of the tube. So our patient for today's lab has an 8.0 millimeter endotracheal tube. Once we've done that, we want to ensure that we input the ideal body weight of the patient. So we're ventilating our patients based off their height and not how much they actually weigh on a scale. 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the height in there in centimeters. And if you look at the ideal body weight in kilograms, um, you're gonna rotate the rotary knob to get the size of the patient. So I'm just gonna scroll down to, to 70 kilograms. And if you look, it's not gonna get you 7.000 to the 10th of a decimal. It's gonna be a little bit off, that's fine. Right there it says 70.5 kilograms, that's fine. So I'm just gonna confirm there. I'm gonna move over to my ventilation settings. So because we selected an adult patient into this ventilator, if you look at the top left-hand screen, that's an adult body. That's already kind of preset at the mode that we're going to utilize for our patient. One of the most common modes in the adult ICU is VCAC. It already presets it to VCAC based off of the height of the patient that we input it. Because we just innovated this patient and placed them on a ventilator, we want to ensure that we're given 100% oxygen. So I'm going to select the little circle there, turn it all the way up to 100, and then confirm and then so forth and so on. We can input our tidal volume based off of what we wanna to do to maintain acid-base balance. Uh, we can also um, adjust our respiratory rate. I'll just twist it to 14 and then confirm. Um, and then you also can titrate your peep there as well and then hit confirm. Um, and then I'm gonna press X. And now at this point, we're ready to ventilate our patient. So this test lung is gonna be my patient today. Hit start ventilation on the screen, confirm, remove the cap and place it on my endotracheal tube. So now at this point, we're ventilating our patient. A couple things I want you to be mindful of on the screen itself, just remember this: these bottom rotary knobs, that's your prescription or parameters that you set for every patient. And then this column right here, those are your measurements, those are the return volumes, their values that we're gonna use to assess our patient. Also in the middle, you have some scalar forms, flow over time. Uh, you got pressure over time, flow over time, and volume over time that you can utilize to assess your patients there. Up at the top screen too, this part, portion right here would be where the alarm uh, messages will be. And then if you look at, at the, the middle left-hand screen, that's gonna, where it says VCAC, all of your modes is always gonna be there. So if you change the mode to something else, it's gonna be right there. We here at Walter Reed, we leave all of our V500 uh, interfaces the same way so that all of our providers rotating through know what they're looking at every single time.